Hi, I'm Tim May, and I'm moderating this series of 10 conversations on expressive photography with Phil Douglas. Phil understands the nature of expressive photography as well as anyone I know. For 35 years, he directed the Douglas Visual Workshops, and he helped more than 10,000 communications professionals make and use photographs to express ideas, tell stories, and convey meaning. Phil says he's learned a great deal from these, those workshop participants over the years, and he en also enjoys learning from the tens of thousands of images he's made in more than 60 countries. I first met Phil uh, at Santa Fe Workshops in 2004, and we went on to photograph together across North America, as well as in Europe, Asia, Africa, and South America. Both Phil and I have displayed our images on various photographic websites, and Phil has put together a 5,000 image cyber book on expressive photography at pbase.com. You can find the link to that cyber book in the notes below. It has drawn more than 10 million visitors since he started in 2003. They have left more than 12,000 comments under his pictures, and Phil has answered each one of them. When the pandemic brought Zoom into our lives, I asked Phil to bring that cyber book to life in this set of 10 conversations on expressive photography. And now he has. Enjoy. So what are we talking about today? We're talking about the frame, and the frame means the edges of our photograph. And when we look in the viewfinder, we see a boundary. And we have to establish the boundary, set the boundary, in order to express what we want to say with our image. And this module is all about how to set boundaries to create meaning in photographs. Okay. Uh, this, image, this image is a good example. I made, I made this picture in the, uh, the, the center of Zagreb, Croatia. And one of the heroes of the, the founding of an independent Croatia was this gentleman with the sword. And I moved so that the frame is filled with children's balloons, including looks like Bugs Bunny himself. Uh, and this guy is coming at us on his horse, waving his sword. <laughs> now, I, I moved in to juxtapose the balloons with the statue, okay? And in moving in, I was able to remove all extraneous material from the picture. It's mm -hmm. called cropping in frame. And later, when I uh, put the image into Photoshop, I had a second chance to establish my border, my boundary, my frame, by cropping it long and narrow. So I established boundaries twice in this picture. Mm -hmm. And you always remember that digital photography gives us two chances to, well, actually, film photography did too. Uh, uh, we can crop our picture and we can crop in frame. Well, Tim, do you want to add something to the, the first image? Uh, well, the thing about the first image, by the way, it, the thing, first move your cursor so the top, yeah, the first one is the way, the, the way, I mean, for me, the incongruity just yells at me, but <laughs> the, the way the uh, saber just hugs that window and just is about ready to puncture poor Bugs <laughs> Money's ear is what it got me in that image. Yes, yes. And by moving the borders in, and this is what I did in Photoshop using the crop tool, 
I push the borders in and you can see right here, there's tension here between the edge. Right. And th th it's a narrow frame and it, it really mimics the narrowness of the space between the tip of the saber right. and Bugs Bunny's ear. Poor Bugs. <laughs> this is a full frame shot. I have not cropped it. I made it in uh, Guilin, China. <clears throat> and there was this woman who manned a stall in a, like a, a little mini mall. And she wasn't in, encountering customers. And so she's reading her paper. And she's sitting on a little stool in a space that's barely big enough. Her back is backed up against the edge of the frame on the right. And uh, I framed, I chopped off the top of her head to condense her form. And she's almost sitting on the, the or the, her feet are almost on the bottom of the frame. And then all the, the stuff on the, in the store is being pressed by the frame. And this magnifies the meaning of the picture, which is, I have very little space right. in which to work, in which to read. So the frame, the framing is integral in, in meaning here. Right. We're not talking aesthetics now. We're talking meaning. You and I were photographing in, uh, uh, was it Jackson, California? It was a, uh, we were up in gold country. And uh, there was this old cemetery. And there were these turkey vultures using the arm of the cross as a perch. And as I moved in to make this picture, one of them took off and I used my option in time to stop a moment. And you can see here, there's very little space between the edge of the cross and the tip of the wing. And here on this edge, there's very little space. And you can see that I don't have a square format camera this was done, this was establishing my boundary in Photoshop. Uh, and I created here a image fraught with tension by leaving very little space here and very little space there. And to do this, I created a square, <clears throat> square frame. Tim, you have Anything to add to this? <laughs> uh, does jealousy count? No. Uh, <laughs> what, what, I, what I want, what I'm finding myself thinking about is the tree on the left. And my, ten, my tendency would have been to crop that out. But I, I, and I'm dealing, I'm thinking about the issue of the balance and the bird in flight and the tree balance each other. So yes. I think it probably worked really well, but I tend to go starker, I think, than you and I would have cropped it, the tree out, I think, made it a bit of a more, a narrow image. Remember, there's no one right or wrong way to crop a picture or to frame a picture. It depends upon your intention. Right. So there's no rule of book. Thou right. shalt always create thy frame in this way. Right. It's you're, right. Now, I, when I chose to crop it like this, I saw the tree as a, a form that visually echoed the form of this vulture. Right. Vertical, vertical, and vertical cross, and right. vertical vulture. It's a series of one, two, one, two, three, four verticals carrying you across frame within within a square outer frame right we were in Laos and this this image is called the Mekong taxi and uh, remember these people would always gather on one shore and there'd be a guy carrying them across the river right move your cursor 
Okay. Back and forth, back and forth. And so the boat or the, or the taxi is a long boat and it's riding low in the water. And there's a row of people in the boat. And so I cropped the frame, the final frame, long and narrow as a horizontal. So you've seen now a vertical picture, the, the man and the saber and, and the balloons, and a square picture, the turkey vultures in the cross, and now a, a horizontal crop, all done after I framed the picture originally. Right. And the thing that that's, uh, is coming to me is the, the difference in those frames, uh, narrow rectangle square and this. It's almost as if that horizontal framing speaks of journey, speaks yeah. of travel. Uh, movement. Uh, yeah, of movement. Um, and I hadn't thought about long panoramic framing that way before. That is one of the things that I learned as a photojournalist and as a photo editor for a magazine or for a newspaper, the when you're creating a page layout on the, in what was known in the old days as our print media, <laughs> you're, you're dealing with shapes on a page and you drew, you pull the eye through a page right. with the shape of a picture. I was in uh, uh, or with a student in, in a, tu a tutorial session in Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, we, we stopped by the library there and I liked the library because it had an interesting entry. Uh, uh, there were two walkways, uh, each with a railing surrounding an open space and there was a a pole coming up, the gold pole here is coming up from the from the ground level. Uh, I'm on a second level and there's a man cr crossing um, in the opposite, uh, the, the exit level. Uh, and so <clears throat> what I saw were triangles all over the place created by light and shadow. And I'm working here with my outer frame to begin right here, whoops, here, coming down and then it moves here, it moves here, it moves here. There are a series of leading lines that carry you through the entire image vertically and horizontally. And again, when I framed the image, I held my camera vertically to create a vertical frame. That is the first decision we make when we frame a picture with our camera. Uh, am I holding my camera horizontally or am I holding my camera vertically? And that depends on what I'm trying to say. And I'm dealing with levels in space here, varying levels, vertical levels as we move up through the picture. So naturally, I held my camera vertically. And then I cropped it also in Photoshop to intensify that. Tim? Well, I, yeah, the zigzag is just astounding. And especially the way, for the most part, it's a little tricky down at the bottom, but you right. start in the upper left-hand corner, go to the right, go to the left, go to the middle, and then kind of uh, weep out at the bottom. But, and I think I'm quite sure one of these uh, discussions will be about light. But for me, it's the light that, that is not, well, I'm not talking, except that the light's related to the frame because mm -hmm. in the bottom triangle, it's a kind of solid, but in the top, it's got a flow to it. It's almost as if there's a, um, it's just astounding. I mean, the, the, the flow in the top of the, between the two parts of the wall of the light is radiating light. Speaks of Arizona radiating heat. <laughs> yes, radiating heat.
it's interesting the the, uh, the relationship between the, the previous shot and this shot, which we made in uh, I believe it was uh, either Morocco or, or Tunisia. I, I, I'm having a slight mental lapse as to which of these two countries. They're adjacent countries in North Africa, and um, the. Uh, uh, the garb is very similar, and these women are walking by a mural that is full of triangles, as, as was the, the previous shot. But this is an image where I shot a frame within a frame, and then frames within a frame. The outer frame sets an outer boundary, and then we have a, a framing area here that frames this mural and then each of these are geometric frames they are not uh, 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 horizontals or vertical well they are verticals but they're geometric shapes uh, trapezoids or parallelograms or, or whatever you want to call them but they are frames as well and so the whole theme is I, 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 I could have called this image frameology uh, right. and, and then these two ladies walk into it oblivious to the fact that they're walking through my frame or they're walking past that frame. Tim? Well, and the, I think you mentioned the windows, those frames. Yes. And of course, it's not related to frames, but the fact that both their feet are up in unison is astounding. So we have the, the edge frame, and then we have the frame for the mural, and then we have the, fr the frames within that frame, and then there's the little windows make frames within the frame within the frame. Right. And again, we have a frames here, a window. <laughs> This is in the Denver Art Museum, and I call this the prickly man. Uh, and again, I create a frame here. I place the edge. This is a vertical frame that I uh, that, that is intact. I, I didn't crop this. this. This came out of my camera. And I'm framing a, fr a series of frames here with the window is multiple frames. And there are geometric spaces uh, or geometric shapes within this window created by light and shadow and also through structure. And there are all these prickly lines floating through here. Tim, you have anything to add to this? Well, the thing that gets me here is the breaking of the frame. And, and the fact that the prickly man, you know, most of what's coming out of him is within the frame. But on the left-hand side, obviously his prickliness is going <laughs> out of the frame, just as just as it's also spilling out into the window frame too. Right, but but you've cut them off on the left. Yes, but but that's that to me indic the meaning I get from here is prickliness continues. Be nice. <laughs> Be nice. <laughs> But you see how, how important framing is here. Right. It, 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 when we frame our picture, it's not just do we include this or not include it. That's a basic. But how you frame, where you frame, the, the, creates the tensions that run between objects and extends meaning. Here again. Uh, there are three, three frames working in this picture simultaneously. I have my, uh, 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 the, uh, the camera frame is basically ignored here because I cropped this as a square and it, it was originally a vertical picture. I made this in the, uh, the San Selmo neighborhood of Buenos Aires and it's a couple having a talk in a cafe in the Plaza de Rego bar. And the Plaza de Rego bar's identity is established in the upper part of the window frame that is opened. <laughs> and they're within, no, I'm sorry, closed. 
and they're sitting within the opened portion of the frame and they're revealed thereby, whereas they wouldn't be revealed if the window frame had been closed. And we have a horizontal frame here and a horizontal frame here, all setting within a square frame here. Tim? Uh, for me, the, the, the frames also are creating um, I, a sense of tension or foreboding and partly enhanced by the looks right. and the intensity of their, oh. their conversation, but it feels like something is coming down on them uh, that they're trying to deal with. Yes, there's a frame floating here too. It looks like a picture frame. Mm -hmm. And one, one there too. Right. So I'm seeing things, as we discuss, I'm seeing things I never noticed when I made the picture. Now there are a series of frames here. We were in New York City, remember this? We were walking by this, this uh, gym in, uh, was it Soho or some uh, part of Manhattan? And the, each pane of the, the storefront is a frame within a frame and there are things going on in the frames that reflect each other. There's a man and a woman, uh, a stylized pair of fit people uh, showing off their physiques, uh, mermaid, merman, uh, in the David Barton gym here, look better naked it says. And uh, uh, here we have two people who work at this David Barton gym uh, chatting away. They probably see me uh, outside making a picture because one of them appears to be laughing. And uh, this one is empty, but it, it, it extends the information here. But the key to the picture, of course, is the fellow who looks quite fit himself and has probably just come out or is about to go in and he gives a sense of scale to the scene uh, and, and he is placed here in the frame outside of these frames but within this frame. Tim? Well and it feels like he is the, the, the image is concentrating in down on him and he is a, pre, pre, a real, realistic presentation of the goal of the gym. Right. So you have the purveyors of the service, right. you have the, you know, the goal of the service, and you have the man who's the result of the service. Right. Look yeah. at those muscles. <laughs> yes. We were in uh, 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 Bucharest, uh, Rom uh, Romania, uh, you and I, and uh, we, we had a, a, a fellow photographer who, uh, who, who uh, had his pictures displayed in the, the website where we both display ours, pbase.com, uh, showed us around town and he took us out to the place where, where they stored all the old communist uh, uh, monument, monumentalizations. Uh, uh, and this fellow here has been stored, instead of his usual upright position, stored on his back with his hand up raised among the weeds. And uh, the, uh, I use my frame to crop, remove his head, remove his feet, and concentrate on the hat in hand and the upraised hand as if he's saying, help, help. You, on the other hand, made an image, which we don't see here, but I remember we paired our images in the book we did together called Side by Side, uh, and which included his head and more, more background. You want to add something to this, Tim? Well, it seems particularly timely, even though we did that, I don't know how long ago, with the question about the role of monuments and yes. uh, in our culture and uh, the fact that 
you know, they fairly directly removed their history, uh, yeah, I find interesting. Someday in many of these southern cities in the United States, we, we might have a, a Confederate generals gathering. <laughs> right. Of discarded or stored, let's call them stored monuments. Right. We were in Istanbul. Sure. Good, okay. We were in Istanbul, Turkey, uh, photographing together, and there was these street artists, uh, you know, creating artwork, uh, either if you wanted to stop and have your, your picture made, or in this case, he's showing off a, uh, a picture of a, a Turkish leader, probably had a Turk maybe, but he was using a newspaper clipping or a, a book or a photograph. Uh, to create this this work of portraiture, and I came by and used my frame to relate the frame of the picture and the frame of the original picture to frame him within the picture. So again, I'm including multiple elements within my frame as frames, as frames. And of course, he's he's softly focused and he's very wary of of my intentions. The focus is on these clips and on this this work of, of of his art that he's displaying, and the brick wall behind him is very soft. I'm using a long telephoto lens from a distance, and so you get gradations in sharpness and softness, and they're all included in my vertical exterior frame. Tim, did you want to mention? Well, and the fact that the uh, curved lines at the top seem to again take take yeah. us out of the image yeah. uh, and it leads me uh, me to think it's a representation of what's he thinking it's his thoughts going off they are edges of an awning right oh wow Bill. my final image was made in uh, uh, the sahara desert in morocco we were visiting a Berber encampment and uh, there was a woman who was draped in a beautiful shawl and I wanted to emphasize the shawl and the way her hand you know, caressed it and so I moved in to do that and in so doing I frame her, her face as a kind of just from the nose down looking down emphasizing the, the the lines of the shawl lead you to those hands with the with the red fingernail polish echoing the red in the in the shawl and carrying you on down again a vertical frame creating a relationship of hands and a little of the face to her garment Tim did you want to add uh, it speaks to me of devotion. Yes. Um, and um, it just, it, I, it, you heard me, I went wow when I saw it. Um, I don't think I've ever seen this image. Uh, maybe you've posted it, I don't know. Um, and um, it's a great end, I think, because it does the tend the tendency for people who are not paying attention to framing and more interested in subject would have right. been to include her face right but for me by excluding it you've you've created a tension in the image and also you've caused me to be paying much more attention to her hands so your intention in in the framing is is leading me to the the expression and the feelings of what what you're trying to convey i love that image thank you and with that we'll conclude this session thank you all right